Welcome to this unidentified channel. Did you watch the hearing for the motion to compel that just happened on February the 17th for the Lori Avallo and Chad Daybell case? Mark Means and John Pryor were in court with Rob Wood and Judge Stephen Boyce regarding the motion to compel Mark Means had filed for Rob Wood to turn over discovery with a bunch of names listed. There were like 16 or 17 different names listed on the request for discovery that Mark Means had sent to Rob Wood. And so Rob Wood did not respond in a timely manner, which was within the 14 days. And so Mark Means filed a motion to compel. I didn't ever see the judge deny that, but they were in court that next morning, so it was denied. He didn't grant it. And Mark Means wanted to have a status a status hearing that morning instead of the motion to compel hearing. And so the judge the judge had them go into a breakout room to have this meeting about the status hearing. Mark Means requested it be under seal and so I guess that's why they went off the record or maybe not off the record but out of the view of the public so it would be under seal. And then they came back and had the hearing for the motion to compel. The hearing was held on February the 17th. Now on February the 16th, Mark Means filed a motion to have that hearing that was set for the next morning at 9.30 to have it vacated because he wasn't ready. He didn't know it was on the schedule. He just didn't know. So the judge let Mark Means talk first since it was his motion and he, he got to say why he issued the motion and why he thinks he should be able to get all of these things. And then Rob Wood had his turn to say why he didn't respond. Rob Wood actually did respond with an eight page brief. It says on February 11th, this brief in opposition to defendant Lori Vallow Daybell's declared motion to compel was filed on February the 11th. It came from Rob Wood's office and it just goes through some of the reasons why he would not need to hand over this discovery as Mark Means was asking for quite a bit in his request for that discovery. If you don't remember that request, I will see if I can find it and put it up here for you to be able so you can see it. All right, so in this request for discovery that Mark Means filed, this was filed on December December the 17th, 2020, or at least that's the date it was signed by Mark Means. He, he says, please include, but not limited to, the person's full name, date, and time of conversation, specific statements of said conversation, location of said conversation, substance of conversation, method of conversation, for example, telephone, text, email, FaceTime, face-to-face, -face, etc., duration of said conversation and persons in attendance and or involved in said conversations. Please produce all records of said communications, tangible or intangible, included but not limited to recordings, text messages, emails, phone records, voicemails, pictures, videos, or the like. The list specifies these people. Lori Vallow Daybell, Chad Daybell, Alex Cox, Zulema Pastinis, all the Daybell children, Tammy Daybell, Adam Cox, and the children of Adam Cox, Colby Ryan, Kelsey Ryan, the parents of Chad Daybell, the parents of Tammy Daybell, Melanie Gibb, Summer Shiflett, and any of her family members, David Warwick, 
Larry Woodcock, Ethel K. Vallow Woodcock, which is K. Woodcock, April Raymond, Annie Cushing, Melanie Boudreau Pulowski, Ian Pulowski, Brandon Boudreau, Heather Daybell, who is the sister in law of Chad Daybell, Matthew Daybell, who is the brother of Chad Daybell, persons associated with the group entitled Preparing a People, persons associated with the Avow website, and any and all persons subject to description above. So Mark Means wanted all of this information on everybody listed and then this broad spectrum of people at the end with the persons associated with the preparing of people and the avow website and then anybody else. So the judge made it to where those three things were dropped off and they are not included in the discovery that the prosecutor has to turn over and now Rob Wood will just need to go through his records and make sure everything has been turned over to the defense on these people listed and any conversations that he may have had would just need to be, uh, I guess, documented in some way and turned over to the defense so they would know those conversations were had and maybe statements weren't made but what were the conversations about? What did you discuss in the conversations with these people listed is what Mark Means is looking for and so is John Pryor. Now John Pryor did get to chime in briefly in the hearing as he was not the one to file the motion to compel but is also in it for the discovery. And so he mentioned that some of the discovery he just received was almost a year old, and maybe that is what, what was just sent to him, I'm not sure. Mark Means made this statement about John Pryor receiving this hard drive full of discovery, and Mark Means not receiving the same hard drive. And John Pryor mentioned that some of the discovery he just received in December is very old. And so Rob Wood addressed that and said Mark Means didn't get the discovery because he had already been sent that discovery back in May of 2020 and they just weren't sure if John Pryor had received it. And just based on John Pryor's response, that discovery he just received is very old. Maybe he hadn't received it or maybe he just doesn't realize it is duplicate and that he had received it back in May of 2020. So it wasn't that Mark Means didn't get the discovery, he already had it. The judge ordered that the state hand over any discovery, which they would already do. They took a little break before they came back to talk about the request Mark Means made for Lori Vallow to have a cell phone in the jail. When they came back, uh, Mark Means got to argue his point as he was the one that filed the motion where there is clearly some difference in the way they're treating inmates between the Fremont County Jail and the Madison County Jail. Chad Daybell is in Fremont County. Lori Vallow is in the Madison County Jail and apparently they have split it where men go to Fremont County and women go to Madison County. And John Pryor said he has not had any issues in the Fremont County Jail. So John Pryor files this document on February the 12th that he is not being treated differently and he would have access. Now the judge advised Mark Means that if he is going to make that trip out to the jail, maybe he should call the jail first and see if that room is going to be available or just give him a heads up, hey, I'm coming to use that room. We're not sure if reservations can be made, but if you know they're coming and you don't know anybody else is coming and somebody shows up, you could be like, hey, Somebody's coming to use this room and they'll be here in 20 minutes, so wrap it up in 20 minutes. Something like that. You wouldn't make the lawyer drive all the way there and then tell him he can't go see his client. However, 
that may happen. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, and I don't go into the jails to talk to people, so I don't know if they turn you away or not. I don't know. If you are, let us know what's happening in your specific situation. Is it like Mark Means where they're turning you away from your client and not giving you access? Or is it like John Pryor where he gets access anytime he wants? He says he makes this declaration in response to defendant Lori Vallow's motion set before the court on February 17th about her wanting a cell phone to communicate with her lawyer. He says he's Chad's lawyer and well, he's just basing this information on his, his own beliefs and his own personal knowledge. His client is currently being held in the Fremont County Jail, so the judge ordered that Lori Vallow would not get a cell phone as that is considered contraband inside the jail and that Mark Means would get access to her whenever he needed or wanted and they would make sure that happened. That is where we are now. And as far as the motion to compel, he'll get the discovery for every name listed in that discovery request, except for the last three. And from what Rob Wood has said and, and like portrays, he has already turned over everything that they have to turn over and he will go through his files and make sure he hasn't missed anything. So that's where we stand right now. The next court hearing we have on this case is March 22nd. Will there be a change of venue for this upcoming trial? And are we gonna dismiss this whole case? Will we change venues for this upcoming trial? Rob Wood has hired an expert witness to testify about why we shouldn't change the venue. And Mark Means has hired expert witness to testify as why we should. So we will see what happens with that on March the 22nd. If you missed it, Mark Means filed a motion to reconsider the disqualification of the prosecutor, Rob Wood. He filed that motion after the judge denied the motion. So they did the hearing at the beginning of January. The judge came back and he said Rob Wood could stay on the case. Mark Means filed a will you reconsider motion to the judge on that. Hey, will you reconsider disqualifying Rob Wood? I don't think you made the right choice. And so we didn't get to see that motion that Mark Means filed. I'm not sure why, but it, we can't. We don't have access to it. But what we do have access to is the motion denied by the judge where the judge simply states there is no there is no reconsideration of that in criminal law maybe in civil law the judge says on january 19th 2021 defendant filed a motion for reconsideration requesting the court to reconsider and amend its order regarding motion for disqualification of the prosecutor, Mr. Robert Wood. The motion cites the Idaho State Constitution, the United States Constitution, and any other applicable rule of law as the basis for the requested relief. While the Idaho Rules of Civil Procedure contain provisions for a motion to reconsider, there is no counterpart in the Idaho criminal rules. The Idaho Supreme Court has confirmed that there is no basis for such a motion. In fact, there is no criminal procedural rule that provides a basis to reconsider a decision of this kind. The Idaho Rules of Criminal Procedure have nothing similar to Idaho rules of civil procedure. And then the judge signed it. So that is what Mark Means has been doing. So now Mark Means and John Pryor will prepare for the March hearing. Do you think the trial will be moved? If you do, where do you think it will be moved to? 
That's all I have for you today on the Lori Vallow Chad Daybell case. If you haven't told me yet where you're watching from, be sure and let me know. Thank you again for joining me and thank you for supporting the channel. You know how YouTube works, so make sure you hit all the buttons and I will see you next time. And uh, the hearing, the judge broke out into some kind of, uh, the judge had them break out and then, well, um, but we did have access there. Um, so these are the people, um, so the next mark means and rob and i regarding motion to dis you know, he's already turned over everything that there they have they are not but he requests uh, the Heather Daybell, who is the other, uh, the, um, what was it? Oh, yeah. That's all for I, for the, it was the motion for the prosecutor to turn over some of, uh, yeah. If you missed it, Mark means filed. Um, Judge Stephen Boyce request. Um, that's it.